Hello wonderful person, and look at this pumpkin orbiting asteroid Ryugu. Why? No particular reason. Today we're talking about Ryugu and I'm going to explain to you one of the main reasons why Japan even decided to come here and what their secret plan for this asteroid is in the long term. Not so much science, it's really all about money after all. Welcome to What The Math. Okay, the real reason why there's a pumpkin orbit in this asteroid is because I wanted to show you, in real time, how low of an orbital speed you need to have around this asteroid to actually stay in a permanently stable orbit around it. This beautiful pumpkin, which is only about 18 centimeters in radius, is orbiting around the asteroid Ryugu at a speed of about 37 centimeters per second. That's like one foot per second, that's super super slow. You can literally jump from this asteroid and achieve terminal velocity to escape it. But that's not really the main reason for this video. So, you, by now you probably heard about the Japanese mission uh, Hayabusa 2, with the main intent of essentially, um, well, landing on an asteroid, which they've already achieved, taking the photos of this asteroid, which I believe they've also already achieved, and also colliding an object with the asteroid just to see the effects of this collision. But why are they doing all of this? Are they just kind of fooling around like Elon Musk sending cars to space? Well, not really. There's actually a much, much more economically inclined reasons for all of this. They're doing all of this to test future technology for mining this asteroid. That's right. Japan is literally planning to mine this and to be one of the first nations to get here uh, and it basically turn this into a profitable endeavor. Well, why this asteroid though? Let me show you a really, really cool website, which I've used previously in one of the videos maybe a few years ago, known as Asterank. This is actually a community of scientists and um, financially savvy people that keep track of pretty much every newly discovered asteroid and then using various scientific analyses they try to estimate the value of that asteroid in terms of billions, millions, or even trillions of dollars. So pretty much every major asteroid, especially asteroids very close to our planet Earth that you see right there, is always on this list, the list known as Asterank list. This is a really, really cool website. It's a website that's going to become absolutely crucial in the future. But today it's maybe more of a theoretical uh, website than it is actually a practical website because we don't have the uh, technology. Well, actually, no, we do have the technology. We don't have the means of constructing um, interstellar or interplanetary, that is, uh, mining facilities just yet. But we're getting there. All right, so why Ryugu? What's so special about Ryugu? What, why this particular asteroid that basically is just a big round object that's about uh, 0.4 kilometers in radius or just about like 900 meters in diameter. So the main reason is because it is actually the most viable asteroid to mine right now. And this is why it was chosen by the Japanese scientists. It's literally right here. It's the first on the list. Yeah, it has this other name called 1999JU3. That was its first name. It was renamed Ryugo only a few years ago in 2015. Until then, it was actually known as 1999JU3. So, if I were to actually uh, include some of the details about this asteroid, which is actually right here, it's uh, on top, as the most cost-effective asteroid uh, to be mined by humans, you would discover that, first of all, if you were to come here and try to mine it, you would discover about 83 billion worth of uh, materials. And the materials here would be, uh, well, more or less, Things like nickel, iron, cobalt, uh, there's a lot of water here, there's nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia, but it's really the metals that are really expensive. Uh, there might be some gold and stuff, but it's really things like nickel, iron, and cobalt that are a lot more valuable here. The estimated profit by, you know, using local technologies, using modern stuff, just the rockets that we currently have, like Saturn V, for example, would be about $30 billion. So that means that even with current technologies, we could actually make quite a big profit. But if we turn this into an actual industry, it will go up dramatically. This could potentially become close to about $70 billion. 
Now, why is it so cost effective? Well, one of the reasons is because it comes to Earth really close. As a matter of fact, it's what's known as a near Earth asteroid. It potentially could hit Earth one day. It's actually kind of dangerous. At its closest, it comes to Earth at a distance of about one fourth of a distance to the moon. As a matter of fact, this huge thing of like almost uh, 0.8 kilometers across could potentially hit Earth one day and cause tremendous, tremendous disasters. Um, but um, as of now, we don't think it would happen in the next few thousand years. Hopefully by then we'll actually mine it and there will be nothing left. Nevertheless though, it's definitely worth coming here for mining purposes. And so this right here is actually the main reason why it's so good for mining purposes because of its minimum orbit insertion uh, needed. It's super close to Earth. You would just have to send a rocket that's only about a quarter of a distance to the moon and then basically you could potentially land a mining uh, facility here. It has a very, very low delta V um, in relation to Earth. Basically, this is the amount of fuel that would be required. Super, super low, much lower than uh, the fuel you need to get to Mars. And because of its relatively low eccentricity, it's relatively close distance to the Sun and close distance to Earth. And really, all of this together makes this an incredible, incredible uh, potential future mining colony. As a matter of fact, if we were one day to land on an asteroid somewhere and create a mining facility, it would most likely be here first. Despite its relatively low um, overall um, financial economic value compared to other asteroids, it is definitely the easiest to create a facility on to basically practice. Even if we, sc if we screw up, we're not going to waste that much money. So overall, mining and really future mining colony is really why Japan is here. They realized, probably without telling others about it, that um, it's most likely going to be the future of uh, mining, especially because Japan doesn't really have a lot of natural resources. They have to look at areas outside and this is where they're looking and they're doing a hell of a good job at it. Their actual mission right now is doing really, really well. And all they need to do now is find a way to bring larger and larger, um, essentially, facilities. Their rocket currently don't... Unfortunately, Japan doesn't really have the um, equivalent of Saturn V just yet in terms of rocketry. But they are getting there pretty quickly. They are only about maybe 10 years away from being able to launch super heavy rockets and from being essentially capable of establishing a first mining colony just on this asteroid right here. And if they could actually create the first mining facility that's very profitable and then actually expand to as asteroids, they could definitely control the future market of space mining. There's a lot of money to be made here. As a matter of fact, if you look at the list here, there is literally trillions and trillions of dollars. Some of the most valuable asteroids are worth tremendous amount of money, and there's a lot of stuff here. But, like I said, it's still in the future, but it looks like Japan is winning that race. So, anyway, that's really all I wanted to show in this video. A pumpkin orbiting asteroid of Yugu, and the real reasons why Japan is really doing this. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about this mission and maybe we'll learn to appreciate its future potentials. Thank you for watching guys, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and subscribe if you still haven't. Click that bell button to be notified about the future videos and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Space out, and as always, bye bye. And one day, if we don't actually mine this asteroid, this is what might happen to our planet Earth. That's right, sometime in the future, Maybe thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe billions of years ahead. This beautiful rock that's worth $80 billion might cause... Actually, I don't think it's falling on Japan. Might cause serious destruction to uh, some countries somewhere on the planet Earth. And create a major tsunami.